Okay, we're going to create a simple pad using Fathom uh, from the starting position. Okay, we've just inserted Fathom. Now I'm going to turn the velocity up a little bit just to make my keys a little less responsive. Now I'm going to insert a wavetable oscillator. That's a sound generator that's going to actually produce my basic sound. Okay, now I want to create a volume envelope for that generator. So I'm going to turn the volume all the way down, select the volume. This will allow me to add a modulator. In this case, I'm going to add an ADSR envelope. Now I'm going to give it a, a softer attack by pulling the top over to the first line, which will be beat one out of four. I'm going to soften the release a little bit, soften up the tack a little bit, allow it to curve in. I'm going to increase the modulation intensity to 100%. That allows the envelope total control over the volume. Now I'm going to increase the period, uh, which is an easy way to extend that envelope. Basically multiply all the points out. You can see as I increase it, the attack becomes slower, the release becomes slower. Now we're going to close that window. Now we're going to add a little life to the sound generator. Since it's a wave table, I can go over to my wave index. Now I'm just going to move it up and down to see what it would what it would be like if I moved that knob with a modulator. We can see how it kind of morphs through different waves. Now just like we did with the volume, I'm going to select it. That allows me to add a modulator. In this case, I'm going to select the LFO. And you can hear the effect as I turn up the intensity. Now, I don't want it to be quite that fast, so I'm going to increase the period of the LFO just the way we did with the volume. Okay, there, that's good. Now we have our moving wavetable oscillator, and we want to insert a filter after it. So we're going to go over to the left, click on Filter. That opens up some choices for us. I'm going to select Cascade, and then I'll connect the oscillator to the filter. And I want to modulate the cutoff, so we're going to move it around and Confirm the filters in line. Well, let's kind of hear what it's going to sound like when we move that knob with the modulator. Like we did with the others, we're going to click on it, add the modulator, and go select an, um, an envelope. In this case, another ADSR envelope. Well, maybe let's let's choose let's choose a different one. I'm not going to use that particular one, but I'm going to use one I've already created. Down here, you'll see a list under the existing, and those are some that I created uh, just messing around making this video. So I'm going to select uh, ADSR one. Once you create a modulator, it's always available to you to use for other things under the existing modulator list. So I'm going to create or use an existing ADSR. Very similar to the one we used for volume, a little bit different shape.
Not much. So basically the cutoff will start at a zero, fade up to the high at the same rate that the volume comes in, maintain for a little while, and then let go at the release. Now I'm going to insert a reverb just to kind of give it a little bit of space. Give it an atmosphere to be in. Sounds like with and without. Now I can bypass the reverb by clicking on it until it turns green. That allows signal to pass through it. I can also click and turn it red, which will completely disable the audio from any point after that. Or excuse me, any point before that. So that's with the reverb on. This is with the reverb bypass. And then this, of course, is killing all of the signal prior to the reverb. I'm going to leave it bypassed for right now. Now I want to go back to my oscillator and give it some more voices. Do that by clicking on the detune, turning it on. Now that gives me a couple more voices that are slightly out of tune with each other. A lot of parameters to investigate here, but uh, for now we're just we're just going to turn it on. So now I want to also create a a little variation in my pitch by using my mod wheel. So we're going to select the pitch fine, go again and add a modulator. In this case, we're going to add the LFO. And this will kind of give us a, a vibrato effect. I'm going to set, select it to bipolar. That will allow it to go back and forth through the zero position. You can see the, the red there. It's going back and forth at that, uh, that amplitude or that intensity. As I increase the intensity, uh, of course, it comes in stronger. Now I want to control that with my mod wheel. So I'm going to select the little dot there in the center. And I'm going to add a modulator to that. So that will give me a modulator adding to my modulator. In this case, I'm going to select MIDI control. Scroll down, select my mod wheel. Now I'm going to increase the intensity of my mod wheel uh, so that when I push my mod wheel forward, it gives me up to that intensity. You can hear that here as I increase the mod wheel. If I set that full, of course, it would go through the full range of the, the fine pitch, but don't really want to go that far with it. So that's how we can modulate a modulator with another modulator. We're also going to set in a, a pitch bend. We're going to do the same with the pitch note. We're going to add a modulator. In this case, we're going to go to the MIDI control and select the pitch wheel. Again, I'm going to set it to bipolar, allowing it to go positive as well as negative. Now I'm going to set my intensity to uh, exactly 0.166. I'll do that with my uh, center mod wheel, clicking up through the tens positions, and then place the mouse pointer directly above um, the little circle there and click on or left click on it will allow me to go through the ones positions to dial in uh, 0.166, which is 100 divided by 12 times 2, giving me uh, two semitones up, as well as two semitones down.
So there's our pitch, our pitch bend. And that's our basic uh, wavetable pad using Fathom.